Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to a special edition of Local Marana. we got a special guest with us. But before we get started, we're going to jump to David and do a little local weather. How you oh. doing? Good morning, David. Good morning. I am just trying to remember where my button is. There I am. There he is. <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. Hey, we're going to cover the weather and traffic this morning because we like to just do things a little more awesome every time we do stuff. I'm going to get rid of these, though. All right, so we're looking at 65 is the temperature right now. Uh, we are looking at a high of 80 degrees today, and it's sunny, and it's going to be sunny all the way till next weekend. And this weekend's going to be cooling off 76 for the high on Saturday. So if you had some outside outside plans, you hit the jackpot. Yes, sir. Next thing we got is traffic. So the only thing we're seeing here in Marana is an incident that happened about 4:30 this morning at the. Railroad and Kochi Canyon. Looks like it's in the clearing stages on that. And then there's some slowing on the interstate for your normal traffic. Looking at about a 15-second delay on, <laughs> or sorry, 15-minute delay on your traffic this morning. I was wondering how we got that precise to 15 seconds. That, that's pretty good. And you know what? Real quickly, uh, the road construction is really moving forward in, uh, in that area. So we're glad to see that. Okay. Special guest. We got Dr. Sylvia Lee, supervisor of District Three, Pima County, in the in the studio with us this morning. Welcome, Doctor. Oh, thank you so much, Clint. I I really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, you know we we've known each other a little while. We've know we have a lot of mutual friends, but I just bumped into you. A, has it been three weeks ago now? Time flies. Three weeks ago uh, at the Marana Food Bank. Yes. And so I before we get started, I really want to give a shout out to you. Sharon Bronson yes. and all the and all the members of the of Pima County Board of Supervisors be, for being so I hate to use the word generous but generous probably applies in this case because there was a sizable uh, commitment from the county uh, and you can elaborate on that a little sure. bit more so welcome welcome to the show oh thank you so much Clint well I am really pleased to be here and good morning everyone um, I uh, I came aboard in December because Sharon Bronson had stepped down because of an accident after 27 years. Mm -hmm. And you know how well she took care of Marana and everyone in District 3 for all those years. And so I was honored to be appointed by the board just for the year. And everyone that is running for District 3 supervisor well, um, the election is coming up in November, and I am not one of the candidates because that was one of the things I right. agreed to. Right. So um, when I came on board, I had learned that um, that the Marana Food Bank had lost um, some service from the Food Bank of Southern Arizona, and they had pulled out, um, and they still – do deliver the mm. food boxes. So I, I want to make sure that, and they also do, I think once a month, uh, mobile, but, um, and they do mobile uh, in the, uh, in this area. Um, uh, but uh, the county, thanks to uh, Mayor Honey, he called Sharon Bronson and Sharon brought it before the board. And the vote was that we would give a hundred thousand dollars for um, this year, and, and until July, July one is our new fiscal mm -hmm. year, and then next year two hundred thousand, and then after that the food bank would be part of what we call outside agencies that we Pima County helps fund, mm -hmm. and we don't fund all these agencies to their capacity. What we do is we give some monies, and there's a there's a whole process, but last year we gave three point six million. Mm to agencies such as the Salrita uh, Food Bank and Community Resource Center. You know, we do uh, quite a bit with regards to other um, nonprofits. They're, they're all nonprofits, and they're vetted by a committee. And then they're, they're put forward for a two-year period. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things the county does is a, a lot of these uh, nonprofits need some assistance, and so that's what we provide. And there's such a need. Oh, I mean, there is. Uh, when when the Mar and Sally Rita with mm -hmm. Tom Murphy and Carlos, it, it, they're actually uh, the Sally Rita Food Bank stepped up exactly. when 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 Ed reached out to Tom to make that all happen. And but it couldn't have happened 
as quickly as it, because right, like gate, uh, the Southern Arizona Food Bank left on Friday. Yes. And the new Marana Food Bank opened on Monday. I know. So there was, it was no just, interruption of service. There wasn't. And, you know, Salrita, thanks to all the wonderful people at the Salrita Food Bank, stepped up and said, yes, we will be part. So now Marana and Salrita are in a partnership. Right. And um, Carlos Valle is yes. the executive director. And, um, you know, we have an excellent relationship with, you know, the mayor, both mayors right. and their friends yes. and forge this partnership. Right. In fact, they're coming before the board of supervisors on May 7th. They're going to give a presentation on how well they are doing after, you know, five months of being open. So uh, look for it on the yeah. Board of Supervisors May 7th. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's on my calendar and I've forgotten it. I'm going to be uh, there as well. Oh, so, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, and I and I want to say Clint himself is on the board yeah, for the Miranda. my pleasure. I know. And so thanks yeah. to all, yeah. so many people that are so generous. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, let's talk about District 3. It's yes. a It's a huge district. It's got to be one of the largest Supervised districts in the United States. I mean, I know that's not a stretch at all. If not, maybe the biggest. Well, I I don't. I, I wish I knew exactly if it, what where we were with regards to the the uh, comparison nationally. But certainly in Pima County, we have the largest. And um, I'm going to put on my yeah, glasses because yeah. I took. I want to make sure I get all this straight. But um, there are seven. Uh, 1,278 square miles of western Pima County, that and the international border with Mexico is one of our borders, and then we go all the way to the Yuma County, and we service Ajo, Y, Lukeville, then we go all the way up to the Maricopa boundary, and Pinal County, and obviously we have almost all of Marana, just District 1, Rex Scott has a tiny sliver but the majority of it is is under District Three, and we go down on the west side of I ten um, again west. And so, um, this was redrawn. The redistricting was draw, redrawn because back in what what happens is every every time there's a census. So back in 2020, um, the state comes up with a redistricting, and then the county needs to follow. And so what we did is we talked to – in fact, I called – I was on that committee uh, before I was even a board of supervisors, and I called the mayor and said, you know, what are your thoughts on how you would like to see this? And he said, it's hard having two supervisors to talk to because at right. that time it right. was kind of split. And so what we did is we redistrict – so that all of, almost all of Marana is with District 3. And uh, Saurita, for example, had three supervisors. Now they're, um, almost all of, of Saurita is in, is in, is in two. Oh, in, in two. But the Saurita Food Bank, because it's west of I-19, the sliver is actually in District 3. Is that right? So we boundary. I'm picturing that geographically. I'm picturing yeah. that area. Yeah. Ba- basically west of 10 and and uh, 19. Yes, All the exactly. way to Yuma. Right, right, exactly. Anyone that doesn't live in the desert or doesn't know this demographic yeah. that we're talking about, it's, it's huge. huge. And we have two, it's so wonderful because we have obviously the, um, the, um, the two of the na- nature preserves, which is the uh, Cabeza Prieta, which is over there by um, the Organ Pipe National mm-hmm. Monument, over by Ajo. Um, that is one of the preserves. Then we have the uh, preserve that is over by Sasabi, um, and I, the name escapes me for one second, sorry. But anyway, we also have two of the border crossings over in Sasabi and in Lukeville with the Mexican border. So we are, as a county, very, very involved, and we call it the Arizona Border Counties Coalition, and that is Santa Rita, uh, excuse me, Santa Cruz County and Cochise County, Yuma County, and Pima County. Together we form this coalition so that we're on top of what's happening on the border, and so that we are all on the same page, mm-hmm. and so we work very closely with with uh, border 
uh, border control and border protection, and we also work very closely with our the Senate, the uh, state senator, Cinema, state sen- uh, the excuse me, U.S. Senator mm-hmm. Cinema, uh, Senator K- Kelly, and our congressional delegation as well, because we we all need to be communicating, right, right. and the city of Tucson right. as well. So that's the key. Yeah. Just talking to each other. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I, I put that at the top of all of my notes. Communication is the key to making this all happen. Exactly. I so, totally agree. Uh, and I we talked about this briefly uh, in discussing you being here. I, yeah. I want to know, I, I, want, I really want to know two things as we move through the rest of this mm-hmm. conversation. I want to know what keeps you awake at night that concerns you. Mm-hmm. And I want to know what you wake up happy We'll get to that at the end because I want to close with the, with the good stuff. <laughs> I love that. But, but w- w- right now, as you sat here and you've mm-hmm. been in this position, now you've been I, – I, I know your background. You've been here – my whole life. Your whole life. I'm born and raised. Because you're Tucson. a fellow grad, grad. From Catalina High School. There the you go. original Catalina. That's in the hood. That's in the hood. <laughs> I love but, that place. But what are the th- – because it's obvious, you know, anybody that's paying attention, we, we have issues. Like everyone else. I mean, but yeah. the issues in Pima County sure. are issue that's really – the thing that you're you're most concerned about, and sure. then maybe what the solution to that might be, and then then let's get to the happy stuff. What oh, what keeps okay. you awake at night? Well, you know, um, we just now got a twenty one million dollar allocation from the feds, and you know whether you agree with what's happening on the border or not, I'm not looking at the politics. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at the pure. Uh, needs. Mm-hmm. So what's happening is that obviously everyone knows about the asylum seekers. Mm-hmm. So once border contr- border um, border control, they come and say, "I'm seeking asylum." They become they become legally processed asylum seekers. What that means is the border patrol will then process them, and they are given a a date and time, and they ov- they obviously check facial recognition for criminals, et cetera. And, and, but we also, so they come across, and they are, if you didn't have the money from the feds, we're not using Pima County money, Santa Cruz County, Cochise money. What we're, what we're utilizing is the federal money um, so that those individuals that come across are not what we call street released. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were very afraid of because we ran out of any money. At the end of last month, of, correct? Exactly. And so now this new influx of money allows us to, and, and the state, uh, the governor's office has has helped us with uh, the transport from the uh, the actual border where they come across once they are processed and takes them to uh, different shelters. And mostly we call it Las um, Alitas. Um, shelter. Mm-hmm. And the, at that point, what the, we have a number of volunteers and we have a contract with community, uh, with Catholic Community Services. And what they do is, first of all, they, they have a place to stay overnight if they so choose. We help them get their transportation uh, set. Now, we don't pay for their transportation, a very, very small amount that we, that we help. The majority of they already know where they want to go. They have a sponsor or a family member. Because remember, the, the at the border, they're, they're given a date and time for their court hearing regarding asylum. So what happens is once they come to Casa Salitas, and the, we feed them, they have the ability to take a shower, and we help them get their next transport to wherever their final destination is. And that's usually their final destination is where their court hearing is going to be. Now, we were hearing all kinds of things about, oh, my goodness, years away. Some places, depending on where, will be much quicker, Mm -hmm. but it could be years away. Mm -hmm. And so um, those individuals, uh, I I believe, are are also – we're trying to get them work permits so that over the period of time, they're working and contributing and – and have uh, an income, so then their court hearing takes place. And so that at that point, um, you know, then they're either granted asylum or right. if they're not, they are 
they must go back to right. their home country. And so uh, we all know that the system is needs is broken because you've got the thousands of individuals, as we all know, have come have come forward. And so that's really, you know, a federal issue. It has nothing to do with the state of Arizona mm-hmm. or Pima County. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to do is to uh, minimize any street releases so that these individuals are humanely cared for and then moved on their way. And we are really a model for the other border communities and how we're handling this. But it is costly. Yeah. Um, and the twenty-one million just came like in the last it, few days, exactly, right? Just in, right. The, in the last week, exactly. So that's going to carry us. So, depending on the influx, so our highest point of influx of of asylum seekers was in December of twenty-three, and if you remember, Secretary of State and uh, Secretary uh, Mayorkas. Um, Blinken and Mayorkas went to Mexico to speak to the president in December to say, hey, you've got to help us here. And so what they've been doing is stopping a lot of the of the influx uh, that we had at a high point, which was in December, to now we're seeing about um, about 3,000 a month. At that time, it was close to eight or 9,000 or even more, maybe 12. I can't remember yeah, exactly. It a, a, but enormous it was a amount high, of number, yeah. very much so. And I, I really want to give kudos to Pima County because it's Pima County that is coordinating all of this through Shane Clark and our emergency services. I was just services. going to mention him. I know him real oh, well. Oh, do you? Yeah, we're, he is so yeah, awesome. Yeah, Shane, I was just getting ready to mention him. He's so an awesome he dude. He is, and he coordinates this whole thing with his team, and it's a very small yeah, team, yeah. along with, again, the people from Catholic Community Services yeah. who are providing a tremendous service. Yeah, I was just getting ready to shout, shout you out, Shane. Shane I know Shane yeah, real well. He's, yeah. You know, he's an awesome singer. No, I, I mean, didn't like, know. Oh, I'm, awesome. I'm going to have him sing then. No, I didn't I'm, know I'm that. not kidding you. Uh, matter of fact, Scott and Shane are on the worship team at Oral Valley Church of the Nazarene. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, well, Shane, okay, now I know. Yeah, We're going to have out. you sing. And, and I knew Shane <laughs> when I, I was president at Pima Community College mm-hmm. until I retired. And Shane was at the community college doing the Public Safety Institute right. and coordinating that right. whole thing. And so I got to know him then. Actually, about um, probably in the February 1st of March, I saw him at church. So I said, hey, let's get on the podcast. And oh. he actually referred. He said, you know who you need to talk to? Oh. And he mentioned you Oh, that's name. so yeah. sweet. Yeah. You should also have... Jan Lesher on. Yeah, we would love to. Oh, yeah. Help, help us, f- f- I, I, help us facilitate that. that. You know, you? as our county administrator, yeah. she's got a tremendous responsibility because yeah. we have 70, uh, I think close to 7,000 employees. Yeah. With an immense... And what's your budget? Because I heard... Oh, I'm, okay. Well, because I, I heard some budgets of communities sure. around here. Sure. And they're like, Kind of staggering. Oh, yeah. You know, it, so, I'll use Moran as an example. Okay. They've almost doubled in the last couple of years, which makes sense if you think about it because the growth, the growth is, is tremendous phenomenal. Out here, I mean, which is so fantastic. In 18, I checked this uh, just recently. In 18, 2018, the population of Morana was 40,000, 42. Now it's 65, and that's a six year period of time. Isn't that amazing? It's insane. It's insane. So that's controlled growth. I, I don't want to leave the word insane floating no, around out it's there. It's contro- controlled growth. Exactly. And I want to say the town council and mayor are doing a yeah. phenomenal yeah. job with the service they're yep. providing. And Terry Rosemont, yes. the, the, the town manager, he is awesome. Yes, yes so he is. So I have, I, I, kudos to all of what yes. they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I um I will say that our budget so pre COVID it was about one point four billion. Mm-hmm. Then we got the influx of COVID money from the feds. And there's about, I don't know, two to three million a, a billion that has now been given out over the mm-hmm. four years. So I'm not sure exactly yeah. how much is left of that. But anyway, you know, that but you have until I believe December of 26 to spend it. And so what we're doing for some of those that the COVID dollars are, we're providing, for example, quite a bit went to Pima County Health Department mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the immunizations right. and the, the staffing to do all that. 
and different kinds of programs and services that we've provided. And so that's what a lot of that use is going to. Yeah, that, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, and I'm going to echo it. This is a federal problem. We just happen to be on the front row. It, oh, that's a well said. You know, we, this it is really federal. Is. This is uh, where we, uh, D.C., we need you guys to and gals to come together and, and and maybe spend a little more time out here with Dr. Lee and <laughs> and, 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 and Lesher and all, all these people because it's in, unless you see it and feel it and touch it and know it, because this is these are human beings we're really talking well, about. There's other issues that go with that, but these well, are human at, beings. At, they are. And, you know, I, I really would like to say, too, it's, at, as I mentioned, we're part of a board of county coalition. So we just had a meeting yesterday and we were saying, because what was in that that Senate bill that never for that Senate proposal for the border that ne- that was was shot down. One of the things in there, um, and we talked about, you know, what are some of the easy solutions? Well, it's all at the federal level, but we we talked about with there's a the U.S. has a consular general, uh, and um, she resides um, uh, consular general Lewis. She resides in Sonora Nogales, okay, but Mm -hmm. she's our U.S. Mm -hmm. Counselor General there, and she was on board. And one of the things she talked about and that we all talked about, and and also um, uh, Senator Kelly's office um, uh, also talked about, was the the, um, ability at the home country, so let's say Guatemala, Mm -hmm. having the U.S. Embassy vet those individuals mm-hmm. that are wanting to seek asylum. And what I was told is you really, it's hard because you can't really claim asylum until you're at our border. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Saying I'm here for asylum. But what we could look at and we t- kicked it around is it's a matter of, of definition. So maybe it's not, I'm, those are people, uh, Pre-asylum seekers. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Pre-qualified, exactly. like you would for a home. Pre-qualified. Or, yeah. Because so, you know, so they don't come across thousands of miles and get here saying, uh-uh, yeah. you, you know, you've got to go back, you know, those those things. And so it's, I mean, they, they're they trekking across thousands yeah. of miles, and they're not just coming from Mexico or, uh, you know, Venezuela, Guatemala, they're also coming from Africa, Senegal. We've got Togo. We've got China. Right. You know, and so there's. It's just amazing the 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 crossers coming over from other um, countries say, seeking asylum. And and if you if you just got here and you're wondering when did this start? Well, this this is. I I love seeing the pictures of a hundred years ago, of the border crossing. Yes, because there really wasn't. There really wasn't a border. The, no, they just you know? walked across. There wasn't, you know. Again. Are we getting ready to go to commercial, David? I have a question. Okay, so David's got a question. S- something was mentioned about sponsors. So when they're they're getting ready to be transported or obtaining transportation, yes. What is a sponsor? What what great question? Can what is in that category? I'm just curious. Oh, that. that's a great question. Most of the time, it's a family or friend. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's it's somebody who is saying, yes, that individual is going to be in my care. They're going to come live with me or I'm going to assist them until they get their job and can can work until their court date. Uh, so if that makes sense. Right, right, right. Okay. So when they do the sponsorship, those that are taking them in, are they signing something or like a promise to help get them to court or is it just kind of like on a, a trust thing or, or? That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that, but okay. it happens at the actual border crossing oh, okay. when uh, CBP um, uh, interviews them and does the facial recognition and all of the all of the assistance because there are those that CBP turns away and says you don't qualify. So they're interviewing every single one of those individuals. And that's the concern that the, the border chief has, as well as, as all of us from the, the border counties, is uh, so many of our, our uh, border uh, patrol officers are doing processing. 
they're not out, mm-hmm. th- out at the border seeing who's crossing illegally. Are they smuggling? Are they what's going on? So that's all of our concern because so much of their time now is spent doing that processing, and that right. is an issue. But in that border bill, as I understand it, were some solutions to that. So I really hope Congress will go back and look at that border bill because there were solutions to getting uh, border patrol officers through the academy faster, mm-hmm. the paperwork, mm-hmm. hiring more so that we can and, – and more technology so that we can assist – in getting them out on the border where they should be uh, and monitoring that. That answer your question, David? It did. Thank you so much. Yeah. You bet. Thank you. You, you know, we all, I, I, I'm going to say we all agree, and I think we all agree. We, we, want, we don't want the bad characters. None of, no, there's no benefit for oh, any of us. Oh, my goodness. We, don't, no. we, we have enough issues of our own to, than bringing in more bad characters. Right. But on the same token, I'm of the, again, I mentioned the 100 year pictures that I've seen of border crossings in different places yes. as they are now. And I'm like, well, it worked pretty good until we started started messing with it. Fair enough to say? Well, the population changed yeah. so much. We are going to go to a commercial break, aren't we, David? I yes, think sir. we yeah, are. We are. All right. Thank you, David. Discover, Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with the tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, coppercreekcookies.net. Are you looking to establish a powerful online presence for your brand? Look no further than Live the Dream Media. Our team of experts possess the capabilities and skills necessary to make it happen. From creating compelling content to analyzing data and making strategic decisions, we've got it covered. Don't let a lack of social media know-how hold you back. Visit ltdmedia.net for more information. Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Okay, we are back. We are back. And again, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us on this special edition with our special guest, Dr. Lee from uh, Pima County Board of Supervisors. So we we talked about the harsh reality of some of the stuff we deal with. Yes. Now, or that you deal with uh, for for us. Um, let's talk about the good stuff. Oh, let's I'd talk about the to. fun stuff, the, th- the stuff sure. that gives you joy when you wake up going, man, I can't wait to go deal with this or talk to these people are yes well love, this is going to be fun so this you just let her roll this is a really fun part there's some really really exciting things we're doing you know there's so much research over the years that early childhood education can do so much for our community and and families and that individual that goes through early childhood will have such a better chance at life. And um, and unfortunately, you know, some states pay for it and some states don't. Mm-hmm. Our state does not. And what that means is is the families are, are having to pay for it. And 
if you're a low income or even medium income individual, which is where most people are, exactly, it is very expensive. And um, I know when my daughter, she's going to be thirty, you know, I had to pay for it out of pocket, and it it was very costly. So one of the things, and I want to give a shout out to all of my colleagues on the on the uh, Pima County Board of Supervisors, Adelita Grijalva, Matt. Matt Hines and um, Rex Scott, they and Sharon Bronson, they um, and also and I, again I don't know how it was voted and if Steve Christie voted for it or not I really don't know but those are were the individuals at the time it was was uh, voted through is what we call Peeps, and that is a scholarship program, um, and it is a scholarship program for preschool and pre-kindergarten. So um, we gave out, um, and I don't want to say it's just the county, um, <clears throat> the towns, the town of Marana contributes, the city of Tucson, United Way, and we served 1,600 uh, students this year um, that are young kids and that are just um, starting out in life. And I was so fortunate to Tour the Flowing Wells Family Resource Center and Early Learning Center and just saw what the money is going towards because they had a class. There were two classes with a teacher and, a, and several aides, and they had a class of about 16 kids. Now, you know, so they could really give them the attention that they needed. And I was so impressed with that. And so the county... Um, has been contributing um, 30, 30 million over a period using COVID funds, and that when that runs out, the county will be not. Uh, I don't know the amount, right. but will be utilizing other funding to pay for that, and so um, that is something that, in my mind, is just such a joy to see that. We have stepped up, and we are, I think, a national model because what we've been getting a lot of contacts from other states saying, "Hey, we don't do that," or other counties, we, you know, we don't have preschool, uh, a paid preschool or pre-K. What what can we do? And so we're we're sharing our model with them. You so. know, I I had no clue you were going to lead with that. Oh, but I am so happy for me for me. I don't think anything's ahead of our children as far as education. It, there are a lot of things that are important. Our border is important. Uh, sure. Crime, uh, all that's important. But to me, it starts with education. It starts with children, and it starts – for me, it's as early as possible. David's baby's going to turn three next month. Oh. And, and your, your and my babies are in the same age, okay. 30. I yeah. got a 29 and soon to be 31 yeah, years. my too, yeah. <clears throat> but you know what? That's something that we talk about here all the time. We've got to do a better job, all of us, not just Arizona, not just Pima County, everyone. We've got to do a better job. And when I hear, I saw someone on Facebook yeah. the other day saying, well, I, property taxes or school taxes should be exempt for people that don't have children in school. And my first reaction was, well, who paid for yours? <laughs> but more importantly, here's my selfish take on this. Yeah. Who's going to take care of me when I get older? I'm old now, but who, I want smart, whatever you are, road builders, uh, people working in restaurants, doctors, law. I want all of the best people to take care of me in a selfish Absolutely. way as I get older. So to say Absolutely. I don't want to support education is insane. It is insane. And I will say that, uh, <clears throat> you know, it is very unfortunate, and you may not know this, but Arizona has traditionally been in the lower part oh, in funding education, and and it's just sad. It's because you know <laughs> I I know it's a, a lot of it is costly because uh, for a while when my daughter was born, I was in Minnesota as a dean in Minneapolis for five years, and there's a lot more in property tax. Yeah. But I will tell you the school system, and the economy. Because again, let's face it, and you may not think that you should be paying for somebody else's kid, but it has so much to do with our uh, economic development and our economy and our crime rates and Abs our, our safety and everything. There's this thing, uh, Edgar Soto, a yes. mutual friend of ours sure. who's running sure. for District 3, was mentioning just the other day to me about the site selectors. 
that come around and they're they're with large organizations mm-hmm. and they're they're picking where the next Intel. Oh, or absolutely. It, wherever these large corporations, and you know one of the very first things they look at is yeah. is education. Yes. What kind of? Because you know what? That's their workforce. Absolutely. Should they choose to come it is here? their workforce. So yeah, yeah. And I want to give kudos to Pima Community College because Chancellor Lambert, who who recently left, but he he came in 2013, and I was on the Pima College Board of Governors when we hired him. And I, I remember saying to him, hey, could you bring what you brought to Washington State here with regards to workforce? Because, you know, at that time, Jim Click Ford, Jim Click was having to go get his master mm-hmm. technicians in Phoenix mm-hmm. because Pima was not providing the workforce. But now I don't know if you've seen what's happened with her, with the Centers of Excellence for Automotive, Manufacturing, yeah. Healthcare. Cyber, cyber security, all these, these things are happening. And the board at that time very much supported the building of new buildings. And now you could eat off the floor in that mm-hmm. automotive mm-hmm. Uh, center of excellence. And now what um, are, what's happening is these, these students are coming in and they are in a line to become what we call master technicians mm-hmm. They will have jobs with Jim Click and other dealers as master technicians making excellent salaries before they graduate. Yeah. They know where they're working. And it's tremendous. In our aviation technology, we're now at two shifts at Pima Community College in training because mm-hmm. there's such a need out there. My, our, our son-in-law, Derek, yeah. just he's going to graduate next month from an elect, electrician program. Oh. Terrific. And he just won, shout out to our son-in-law, he just won the wire off. <laughs> what, the it's wire like a rodeo off. Oh, for oh, I love wiring. That. And, he, and he's got a trip to uh, Miami oh, my because of that. And I Tucson is in the top five of need for electricians Very because of the much so. because of the growth that we've oh, got. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the pay raise time there, Derek. So shout out to our son in law. We love you. And of course I expected him to win the the wire off because he's just that kind of personality. You know, he's uh-huh. just gonna succeed. Uh, but to me, again, it goes back to education. And the earlier we can start as a community supporting every child, yes. every every kid, yes. right on through um I, I like the flexibility too of some of this stuff. I really do because I kids learn different. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm one of four children, and we all, oh. gra- you know, and <clears throat> I've got doctors in my family and all this stuff. We we all learned differently, and so one size fits all to me. It's just it doesn't. It work. just doesn't no, work. No, ab- you and, a- absolutely. And so some of the flexibility that we have, I really love that because at the end of the day. If we can't challenge ourselves as adults to do a better job of raising our children and educating our children, who's going to do it for us? They aren't. They aren't. No. Because kids are kids. They're kids. So it's up to us as parents or caregivers, grandparents, to make sure that happens. And, and, uh, you know, you can't say, oh, gee, it's too expensive now because we have the peeps. Right. So folks out there, if if you are in need, look look on the Pima county website for early childhood learning and look at that scholarship yeah yeah you know this has been fun i knew it would be oh, we're, we're flying right through this that's great um what else what else well, it makes you excited to well, wake up in the you morning? know um i always listen to the news first thing in the morning and different stations i try not to do is that what one. you really want to start your day I with i do <laughs> i'm crazy but i do and i do it at night we gotta too. stay informed i know we? i know i do and so one of the things that you hear about in the whole country it's not just in Pima County, not just in Arizona, is affordable housing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I, and, and, you know, I feel badly for some of these young folks that are coming out and, you know, they can't, it, it, buying a house is out of their yeah, reach. Yeah. So the beauty of one of the things the county has put in money this year alone was $5 million. And what the county does is augments the ability for some of these builders to bid on some of this, these contracts for low-income housing. And, and, and so what they'll do is they'll actually be building 
uh, um, not just multi-use mm-hmm. housing uh, like apartments, or but actual homes. Mm-hmm. And and it's exciting to know that. And these individuals, um, hopefully, because they are for low income uh, and some medium income, can mm-hmm. actually come mm-hmm. in and afford now to to purchase and also afford rent Mm -hmm. because not everything is to purchase but to rent. And I want to shout out to um, the um, Habitat for Humanity, which is so Mm -hmm. cool. I I was able to tour there. They call it the Chuck Center, which is a manufacturing center. That's who you need to have on here because... You know, in the the former days, those individuals, and I don't want to say they still don't do it, but they'd build from, uh, uh, you know, the ground up. Right. But now they're actually doing walls in that manufacturing yeah. center. And man, so they're p- transporting entire walls right. that are already built. And so then they're putting them up. Right. And um, it's just really exciting. And these to are well structured homes. Oh these my aren't goodness. like we think of the old days, pre they, manufactured homes and stuff. And oh, let's think they about are, they, they're wood. They're actually you know, they're in many cases and, better than the original. And they're than the stucco stick and they're they're just like any construction yeah. site you see out there with a builder. But I would urge you to have um, You're gonna help me you're I gonna help certainly me with that will. as well. Aren't you? I certainly will because the habitat's doing some really amazing things. Right here in Miranda. Yeah, you know, you you talked about the and we talk about that a lot. Ed Ed Honey, the mayor of Miranda. Uh, yeah, we, I love it. We chat about this a lot. Um, let's say let's say with Miranda growing like it is. So, you, you, uh, uh, mom's a school teacher, dad's uh, a police officer, or or works at one of the local companies yeah. here, CTI that just did the ribbon cutting, uh, and they've got a couple of kids. Uh, with the housing being the way it is, I mean, yeah. rent's insane. It is insane. I it, mean, it you, you're so, talking 2,500 oh are goodness. up for like places that when you, you know, we're not that's, that old. That and you, that's you taking a big chunk, chunk of their out, exactly, income. Exactly, exactly. And that's not food. That's just rent. Yes. And hey, so, can yes, I, jump can in I here, David. Have you, have you guys heard anything about that company, that online company that's, they're going after the attorney, Arizona Attorney General currently is. It's, um, it's like a apartment and rental like website, and they were found to be basically fixing the market oh. themselves with algorithm. Did you guys hear anything about that? Let me pull it up. I haven't. But, I haven't. Uh, you know what yeah. doesn't surprise me at all because I was in the real estate industry way back oh. in the day for quite a while, and okay. and I, you know, there, some of the stuff I'm like, why? Why is this? Yeah. It's it's unspoken collusion. Yes, right, right. right? I, I mean, got we the, I got the name of it. It's Real Page. Okay. So, um, Arizona Attorney General. Is suing several landlords and software company RealPage for illegally colluding to raise rents and harming thousands of renters yeah. in the state. Yeah. They've tricked tr- tenants into paying more for rent than they otherwise would have. Yeah. Oh, wow, uh, was, I'll look that up. Yeah, Thank it's you. a, it's a. I, I came across it just a couple days ago. So yeah, this information was just posted on March 18th of 2024 on yeah. MoneyWise.com. So it's a national thing. Wow. Um, the state's lawsuit claims rent. In Phoenix and Tucson, may have climbed at least thirty percent due to the rental monopoly. Oh my goodness! Well, yeah. I wasn't going to go down the rabbit hole a while ago when you brought that well, up. I just, but I just thought, you know, no, you no, guys that's, I'm glad you prices. brought that up. I just, uh, it's a, it's a pretty new wow. development. Uh, well, thanks, Doctor Lee. Thanks, so Dave. I just wanted to share. Yeah, appreciate that. Because so much of this has been manipulated from the jump to begin with. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, while you're touching about that, and we just did an article in uh, this is Moran. I believe it came out Monday. Uh, about this, but we use the starter home mentality for businesses Yeah, to keep the local flavor the way it is, uh-huh. not bashing corporations sure, because sure. every small business pretty much aspires to be a big business. Of so course. let's not be hypocritical about sure, this. Sure. However, that be, be, being a small business mm-hmm. operator, yeah. we already know that roughly half of the American United States economy is is small business it. it's the local flavor uh, it stays local yes. the corporations aren't taking the money somewhere else right. and investing in it uh, we need that mentality in business the You're, the almost the starter home mentality and we use know, gilbert really as point. as the example because we bo- we were both up David and Tammy and I went up for a job, and then uh, David was up. His in laws live in that area. They have created a downtown area that you can't you can't tell corporate from mom and pop 
Wow. And they've created lower... I'm not expecting government to create winners or losers. That's not their role. Yeah. But make things affordable for the the small... Because a small operator can't spend $2 million to build a building. Right. They got to exactly. just keep, I mean, I won't quote who it is, but there's a established ent- a business owner in this community in restaurants and his, ba- and we all do it. You're just following the business that went out and you move in to their existing business. Sometimes sure. they've been there forever. Right. And right. try to adjust it to your mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. And we really, it, we need it from a local level. We need it from county level. We need it from state level to support the small business. Because again, being a small business operator for the last 35 years, I can tell you, we're the backbone absolutely of, the, of our, our local communities and to keep those local flavors because again not bashing corporations sure. but if a, i won't name names but if a hamburger joint and an ice cream joint and a taco joint all show up in your town what separates us from chattanooga tennessee or billings montana right. or chicago Illinois? Right. We, right. we all look the same as far as our our restaurants Right. Absolutely. So to, to piggyback off what you're talking about, about affordable housing for families, and we need it. Yes. More starter homes. We need more starter business opportunities. Yes, we do. And one of the things, and, and I apologize, I don't have the exact amount, Bar, but our um, industrial development um, IDA authority um, at Pima County and City of Tucson has one as well, has has loans for new businesses. It's called uh, Pima County IDA, Industrial Development Authority. Mm-hmm. So you can go on Pima County website, City of Tucson, what, wherever you you want that business, and take a look at these starter programs they have. So that because IDA, these IDAs are really um, looking at the economic development of the community. Mm-hmm for these businesses, the small businesses. So I urge yeah. every, anyone out there to take a look at that. And, and and the flavor of the article, no pun intended, was we, we've got to get more of that. Mm-hmm. We've got to get the developers, because we've talked to them, and right. it's like, well, there's not the return on investment that right. I need. Kind of, right. Well, you know what? How do we fix that? Right. And the, and leadership to mm-hmm. challenge leaders mm-hmm. can kind of hold the, – the, the developers don't get just like a free runway. Oh, no. I mean, so at the end of the day, there has to be some accountability in that. Oh, And, and, the, right. and the, the, the final thought I'll have on that is we don't have large legal departments or resources mm-hmm. that the large companies that can just come in and wait. Oh, I right. remember a large box store opened over here recently, and they were having a few permittings, and the manager mm-hmm. and he and I knew each other, and he was, you know, rightfully a little bit complaining, and it's slow, and I'm like, but you've got people to take care of this. Yeah, You're but- not actually having to deal with it. When I have the same problem, guess who has to deal with it? Yeah. You're right. It's me yeah, by myself, absolutely. the lone dude, and there's no – so part of it is also on the small business owners as mm-hmm. well, yes. having more of a cooperative, right. working together, which is almost impossible. Like Scott pointed out the other day, you know why? Because they're busy running their business. Right. They really don't see the value, for exactly. the lack of a better word, and spending a lot of time yeah, exactly politicking because that's mm-hmm. kind of what it is, mm-hmm. and that's uh, – well, I didn't mean to hijack where we were no, going, no. but I think they fit hand in hand in glove yes. on, on these. So not only supporting the, the families, but supporting the small, small businesses. Exactly. Because I'm always going to be an advocate for small business. Absolutely. Whether well, I'm yeah. running one or not, I'm exactly. going to always be an advocate. Absolutely. So what else? So one of the things that um, is really exciting, and, and I really want to, again, give kudos to the county. So even though I'm born and raised here, you know, th- I had no idea when until I got into doing what I'm doing as a board of supervisors, the incredible services and programs out there. So one of the programs out there uh, for the Pima County is purchasing um, open land, which we all know that the culture here in Pima County, Tucson, Marana, you know, Oro Valley, Sarita, um, you know, we want to keep Vail. We want to keep our culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we want to keep our be- the beautification of our area. Mm-hmm. So if, you know, I lived in Phoenix 10 years. I did too. Okay. So, it, so, you know. Um, and we love Phoenix. 
There's an energy there. there. There's an energy, and there's all these things happening. But I will say that um, after living there 10 years, I'm so happy to be back yeah. here because this is a small town in that we think is still small, <laughs> although we're over a million people yeah. now. But there's never more than one degree of Isn't separation. You're going to know somebody <laughs> who knows somebody who knows somebody, and that's what I love about yeah. where we where we are. But um, so Pima County has is uh, purchased open lands so that we are ha- not having tremendous building like the Phoenix mm-hmm, area mm-hmm. where there is no open land left. It's just it's just a. a I was there last week. It's a jungle. It's it. I mean, it I is. love the it's energy. A concrete Don't get jungle. me wrong. I, yeah. lo- I love the energy. But sure. Boy, when I'm when I'm done, I'm like. I get to go home. I know. And, and I get to and sit over there on the side of that I mountain know. and just chill exactly. and it's quiet. And, and I'm it's driving peaceful. and I know when I'm hitting Picacho, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, close. I'm getting there. And I then get off at Tangerine Rock, and I and cruise then, <laughs> up that road. And I'm like, that was I'm fun, happy, but I'm, I'm glad happy. to be home. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's what so. it, you, you mentioned that when I first moved to Tucson, I lived in Phoenix since 88 and I moved here in 02. One of my good friends that I knew here, he said, Clint. Everybody knows everybody. It's so true. Everybody knows everybody. And I'm like, yeah, I grew up in a small town in the Midwest, and everybody did know everybody. Yeah. But a million people, I like you say, one, two degrees of separate. You mentioned Shane. Well, I've known Shane for well, exactly. forever. Exactly. And if we threw names out there, like Edgar, I mentioned him all ago. I've known Edgar since 03. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I've known Ed for 15 years. You've known Ed 30 years, yes. I guess, according and, to and And also, I knew Edgar because I worked at Pima Community yeah. College, where he currently yeah. works. So, you know, those are the individuals that... You know, everybody knows somebody. <laughs> and it's relational, too. It's not mm-hmm. just passing somebody in, 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 in traffic and you wave at them, although we did when we grew up that way. Everybody waved at everybody. It's you know these people. You know their children. You exactly. know their grandchildren. You're, I'm, next month I'm getting invited to all kinds of graduations of people. I know. Isn't whose that kids, lovely? They were kids when I, I knew know, them, and I now their kids that. are graduating. I w- I'm, I'm so honored. excited because I was invited to the Flowing Wells High School graduation. And so I'm going to be sitting up and on that stage. But if anybody wants to invite me, I am all here. So I, okay. I love it. You know what? We're going to, we're coming down, we're coming down the runway here. How do, how do we, uh, okay, let's, let's do a call out to the public right now. Sure. If you've got uh, what, eight months left on in your, in your position uh, here? Seven or? months, but who's <laughs> counting? <laughs> But and you know what and 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 again, Doctor Lee, thank you for being here. Number one, but you have been such a, a valuable member of our community for so long because of your edu- your you. involvement in education and all that. And we're glad you chose to come back from Minnesota. It's way too cold. Oh, you I got spent it. the coldest winter of my life in January of 1977 in Brainerd, Minnesota. Oh. Sleeping in a tent. I was in with the Illinois National Guard, and the chill factor a couple nights got to 30, 40 below. That's crazy. Yeah, I thought it was, too. (laughs) (laughs) Thank goodness you're still here. Uh, Didn't freeze to death over there. But, uh, again, how do people reach out to you? If they've got a concern or they've got a suggestion, they got an idea, I know you're pretty pretty, uh, easy to track down. But how how do they reach out? And what are you looking for? Well, you know, anyone can reach out. So our office is staffed by three incredible individuals, um, Maria is my chief of staff, Jen and Anissa. And, you know, I kudos to Sharon for hiring them. And Mm -hmm. and so what our office does is you can call or you can go to just put in district3 at pima.gov, district3 at Mm -hmm. pima, the number three, not spelling it out, district3 at pima.gov. And there is a form there that you can say, I need, I'd like a call back. And here's here's some of my issues. Um, can right. you tell me more? Like if it's a, we, you know, we frequently get zoning issues yeah. or issues with uh, Pima County um, animal um, uh, pack, right. um, you know, c- because there's a barking dog yeah. or there's an issue with zoning or yeah. whatever it might be. And you know, I we have a incredible relationship uh, again with all of the departments within Pima County, which is vast. Mm-hmm. 
and we can be that conduit to mm-hmm. reach out and assist you. Mm-hmm. So please do. You know, uh, one more thing before we go. I and I don't know. I was I could look it up. I guess, but just this week I read that of the counties in Arizona, the order of yeah. desirability, and Greenlee got number one. Which okay, then I I'll, oh. I'll give you that. Okay, but you know who number two was. Pima. Pima County. I know. It is a lovely Isn't place cool? to live. And, you know, I always say, you know, when people complain about traffic and the high cost of rent and stuff, I say, you, you've not probably lived elsewhere yeah. because we are so fortunate here yeah. to have so much, so many people that are are in government that 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 don't people don't realize how hard they work right. for all of us. And most of them, a lot of them, at least the ones I know, they grew up here or have been here. Like Ed's parents were the oh. first water company. Oh, and, Ed. and Herb Kai. Oh, I mean, Ed's, his grandparents came here in the oh, what, yeah. 30s of la- well, uh, the post. Exactly. Um, well, <clears throat> I will say my <clears throat> my grand my great grandparents, my great grandfather came from China through San Francisco. And actually was uh, served in the Civil War on the Union side on a Mississippi gunboat. Is that right? He, yes. So we're talking eighteen sixties. In the eight, absolutely. And my yeah. great and my great grandmother, she became the, you know, they had eight kids and and eventually came to Tucson. And so you know, many of us yeah. have roots that go way back. And and you know, our families had. A Chinese grocery stores mm-hmm. over here in in in, is that in right? Tucson. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm not a native, but I got here as quick as well, I could. Well, you are a native. I've got here in '88. Yeah, My no, kids are natives, so, I, yeah. so by association, I'm their sponsor. I so love it's that. Reverse. <laughs> Dr. Lee, it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you it's so much, Clint. It's and I'm going to I'm going to hold you to these names you've been throwing oh, out there. I okay. want to talk to these people. Okay. We want to get them in the studio, and because our, we want to be a conduit as well Absolutely. for sharing the good news. Hey, we can't ignore the bad stuff. Uh, no, but and let's I, find solutions to these things. This has been fun. Yeah, thank been, you. Will you come back? I will. Thank you for the invite. We'll, we'll give you an invite. We're, okay, we'll figure it out. Okay. Hey, thank you, David, as always, for doing a great job in the booth. Thank you, Scott, for not inter- interfering too much. And uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. We appreciate <laughs> oh, my it. My pleasure. Hey, thank you to all of our viewers, listeners, watchers. Any questions, local Morana, local foodie, or Morana foodie. This is Morana, of course, Live the Dream Media. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have an awesome weekend.